Today's video is sponsored by Squarespace. For a really long time, I thought the idea of a photo book was essentially just your greatest hits. You take any set of photos that might look like they go together or some kind of consistent edit or style. Uh, as long as they were, you know, all good photos, good individual photos, put them together in a book and there you go, there's your photo book. It was like printing a portfolio essentially, but it wasn't until years of spending time with photo books and picking up all kinds of different photo books from different photographers and seeing some of the creative choices they would make, not only in the photos themselves, but the sequencing of the photos. What order do they go in? What happens when you take this photo and put it next to this one or switch them around? And then the size of the book, the size of the photo photos within the book, all of these different choices you have, it's like you have so much room for experimenting and creativity. And it was like a light bulb went off for me after years of looking through all these books and saying, oh yeah, I like these photos, but it didn't click immediately that the idea of taking all the photos and presenting them in a very specific way and then delivering that book, like that becomes the art, that becomes what it is, where these photos live. They're not all of these individual photos anymore, they're a part of something. After putting out my first project, Friend of Mine, in 2014, years later I started to just view the photos and view that particular publication in a totally different way, and that's why I decided to do a second edition which just closed off on the pre-sale. Real quick, thank you so, so much to everybody who ordered a copy. It means the world. Uh, I'm going to be doing some update videos over the next few weeks as the book is going into production, and then I'll be traveling to go and sign every single book as long as COVID and shutdowns and things like that don't interfere. Um, but I will be updating you guys on the whole process. Just again, thank you. But in doing the second edition, it gave me a chance to revisit these photos and really kind of create everything from scratch again. There are photos that were in the first edition that I've removed. There are photos that were never in the first edition that I added to this one, and I completely redesigned the whole sequencing and layout to now just tell a much more cohesive story, and uh, it was a really fun experiment to just go through that process, and I hired my good friend Kevin O'Mara to help me with all of that, and I had a Zoom call with him the other day uh, where he could kind of share some of his insight on making the book with me. The question for me a lot of the times was like, okay, so what's different this time? What grows? What? How does the conversation shift around it? How do you leave more room for interpretation? And I think for me, that was the the first big iteration in our revisions was moving from a linear sequence or a sequence that maybe makes sense specifically geographically. And how do you translate that to people that aren't from Chillicothe, because a majority of the people that are gonna look at this are not from Chillicothe, will never be to Chillicothe. And so how do you expand it outside of the literal to allow for more conversation and perhaps uh, a little bit more editorializing on what being from Chillicothe and what Chillicothe means to you? Yeah, you and I have talked about this before is, is being cautious of anyone claiming to be an expert. and 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 in, in our relationship, I think a lot of this is it's just one approach. Like, I think those are the big things that I try and focus on in the conversations that we have around this work is posing more questions than solutions. I don't think necessarily it's about like, yes, I'm one person that also has uh, a lot of experience around photo books and has a lot of love for printed matter, but it doesn't mean that I'm the only person. You know, you're not right. making a book for me. Who cares what I think? You're making a book because you want to make a book. Once you put it out, there's no take backs. Yeah. That, that's, that's it. You know, it's not like, what did you intend it to be? It's no, this is what it is. This is what it was. Yeah. You know, like, there is no like intention further than this. This is like, regardless of what you intended for this to be, right. this is what people got, you know, like this was as far as they could get into it. And every decision there in was for all intents and purposes intentional, you know, like those were the parts that were available. And, and so I challenge people when they, or make it, when they're making any sort of printed matter, 
Yeah, what decisions are you making? Before I actually decided to go through with this, Kevin was the person I talked to who really kind of pushed me over the edge and talked me into doing this because I wanted to do a second edition. I essentially wanted to change all of the things that I wish I would have done differently on the first edition, but I had all of these doubts. I think as any photographer or creative kind of experiences, you have that self-doubt where I was thinking, well, I don't know if it's good enough to do it this way. I don't know if, if I go this route, is that like the wrong way to go about it? Is that frowned upon in the art world? I mean, I'm so like, I feel like I'm so disconnected from that that I just didn't know and I had so many questions and I was basically just kind of stuck in limbo because I wouldn't let myself make any choices. And I was on the phone talking to Kevin about it one day and he was like, make whatever you wanna make, it doesn't matter. Like, do you wanna make a book that's soft cover? Then do that, hard cover, do that. Do you wanna do a big book, a small book? Do you want it to be really long? Do you want it to have writing? Do you want it to be just the photos? Literally anything you want to do, you can make it that way. And that was huge for me because again, for years, I just felt like I can't make any decisions because I don't want to regret any of these decisions that I make. And I don't know what's right or what's wrong. And that was a big push for me to just put my work out there and just let it be what it is. Is everybody gonna like it? Definitely not. Is everybody gonna buy it? Definitely not. But I wanna be able to put work out there that feels right to me, and I've learned to just kinda of trust my gut and trust with what feels right, as opposed to worrying about what's right or what's wrong. But you should still be intentional with the decisions that you're making. So everything from the photos that actually go in the book and which ones don't belong, taking a good look and seeing what kind of pairs well together. I was pairing photos for the second edition that I didn't pair together in the first, and I'm seeing the photos in a totally different way now. And for me, I printed out all of the pages, basically from the first rough draft of the sequencing, I printed everything out as spreads and put it up on the wall, and then I just kind of started moving things around. In hindsight, I probably shouldn't have printed them out as spreads and just printed them out as single images. That way I could more freely move things around, but I kind of had a rough idea as to how the sequencing would go. So I printed everything out and I put it up on the wall here in the office and it sat there for a month. And I basically just told myself, okay, if I can look at all of these photos, for a month and I don't hate any of them by the time the month is over, then that should be a good sign that I'm okay with these being in the book. And a few of the photos that were on the wall ended up getting cut out of the book because the more I looked at them, they just started to stand out more and more and more. Like, these don't belong here. These don't add to the story. And some of the photos I actually liked as well, but that's one thing that I've had to retrain myself and realize that I don't need to put my greatest hits in the book. I obviously want the photos to be strong, but that doesn't mean that just because I like a photo, it belongs in the story. I don't want to distract from everything. And that's the biggest part of sequencing is figuring out how do these photos flow together. It's like putting songs in a certain order on an album. There needs to be a rhythm to it. You're trying to tell a story and you don't want to just basically throw things on there and hit autofill and just let some program do the rest for you because you need to actually choose what path you're going down and figure out how you're going to get from point A to point B. After the first draft, I had basically realized I was taking all of the photos that I thought would go well together and I was just putting them side by side in a spread. And out of habit, I just ended up doing that over and over and over. And that was one of the things that Kevin and I talked about. He was like, you know, you're, you're, I see what you're doing, but you don't have to go about it that way. You don't want it to be just another and another and another. Cue DJ Khaled. If you're doing the same thing over and over, the viewer is just going to get tired of it and they're going to get used to it and they're going to be basically expecting it every single time they turn the page. So he was kind of showing me different ways to pair photos together without just putting them side by side. You know, how does it change the reaction that you get if instead of seeing both of them side by side in one spread, what happens if you kind of sandwich it? You have the first photo on this page and then you turn it and on the back side of that page is the other photo to go with it. And so it kind of becomes this new way to interact with the work. And you're not just looking at them flat on the spread, you're actually seeing them as you're moving back and forth. And it's just a totally different way to kind of take in both of those photos together. Not only that, but how big are the margins on the page and how big is that photo really being printed? Because you wanna make sure you give that photo some room to breathe and it's not carrying all the way to the edge unless you're doing some kind of full bleed where 
where you want the entire page to be covered, really, really small margins on the edge of the frame can almost kind of be sort of claustrophobic and it can add tension, which might be a choice that you want to make. You just have to make that choice intentionally, whether you do or don't want it. All of these different things come down to what the final result is going to look like. And for me, I really wanted to just draw inspiration from some of my favorite books and the way that they did things. And I would just sit there and flip through different books, figure out what I liked and didn't like, and try to pull some inspiration from all of them to make something that feels like it's complete and it feels like something I would actually want to have on my own shelf. For this particular book, I wanted to keep things really simple, so I wanted it to just be a black linen wrapped hardcover. I personally love black linen wrapped hardcover books. I have plenty on my shelf, and those were things that I've always really liked, so I knew at least at one point I wanted to have one of my books in that form. And I want my book to be able to be like passed around. One kind of thing for me, at least with soft cover books, I'm a little less likely to take it with me and throw it in a bag or carry it around because I'm trying to make sure I don't just damage all of the pages and all of the cover. And so something that's going to be a little bit more durable, that's one of the choices that I made. Choosing the cover image, choosing even the font that I was using in the book itself and for the cover of the book, I just wanted something that felt right. I couldn't just autopilot and just throw anything out there because I really wanted it to feel like it fit with the photos. Even the introduction of the book is something that I had written so much out and I felt like it was really important for me to share that with the viewer, but Putting it at the very beginning of the book, it was kind of like I was spoon feeding the viewer and giving them all the information right up front. And then basically after that, as they're flipping through these pages, they're kind of seeing them through this very narrow lens that I've given them. And I obviously want to tell a story and share my thoughts and feelings on this project, but I don't want to box it in at all. And I found that just by making one simple sentence and that's it, and that's all I give the viewer, they're going to be able to get what it is I'm trying to show, but at the, at the same time, they're going to be able to just experience and consume the photos in a totally different way because I'm not necessarily hand-holding them and guiding them down a very specific path. So all of these choices, big and small, they're all really, really important. And so if you're putting together any kind of project, whether it be a photo book or just a cheap Xerox zine, those are the kind of things you want to ask yourself and really kind of figure out what you're putting together because it's like putting together a puzzle. you got to make all the right choices and put everything exactly how you want it. Otherwise, it's not really going to feel complete in the end. And in the end, I am very happy with how this book has come together in terms of the sequencing and the layout and the final photos that made it in. Super, super excited to get everything going. So again, thank you so much to everybody who pre-ordered a copy of the book. I hope what I'm talking about right now, you'll be able to flip through the book yourself and actually see all of these things in play. Thank you guys for the support on this. And before we wrap up, I'm gonna go ahead and pay some bills and thank our sponsor today, which is Squarespace. Squarespace is the best all-in-one platform to building a great looking website. No matter what your skill level is with this kind of thing, you can do it from your computer, an iPad, a phone. It's all customizable. You can just choose your template and kind of fine tune things to fit your style. And from there, everything else is extremely easy to use. Whether you're updating a portfolio with their simple drag and drop system or adding things to your own online store, like my photo book for instance, everything is really, really intuitive and if you ever have trouble with anything or need help, they have 24-7 award-winning customer service. So if you guys want to try Squarespace out, you can do so entirely free at squarespace.com, but when you're ready to get signed up, I can save you 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain by going to squarespace.com slash mattday. That's it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know if you have any questions at all. Thank you guys for everything. I love you. I'll see you next time.